So when people are looking for a computer, most likely they'll start to look at laptops. Laptops like this one. You want something small, something affordable, perhaps something to do just your everyday tasks on. Perhaps even photo editing. Maybe you're a creator, you want to do some simple photo and video editing. And then you're thinking, you know what? I'm going to get a laptop. But what if there is another option? What if you didn't buy the laptop, but you bought this instead? Because in a lot of ways, it's better, cheaper, and even smaller. So let me tell you, what is a mini IT13? It is this mini PC. So here's five reasons why you might want to consider this instead of a laptop. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10 but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out Hookies.com in the video description below. Reason number one, it is that is cheaper so a laptop kind of a lower end if you want to get a nice laptop this is asus zenbook 14x oled and this goes roughly around 1500 dollars maybe you can get it a few hundred dollars cheaper but this mini pc is actually half the price but the performance is very, very similar. In fact, a little bit faster, which I'll show you in a minute. So I know that the laptop will come with a keyboard and a screen, and perhaps that is important to you to have the portability aspect. For a moment, let's put that on the side and say that you just want something at home and maybe you want to separate the, look, I'm working in here, and when I'm going away, I don't need the portability aspect. You want to be stationary. So what you can do is get a nice, 24 or 27 inch screen and a really nice keyboard like Logitech's MX keys and Logitech's MX master mouse and you're still cheaper than this Asus laptop on this mini PC and these you can use forever but if you get a laptop you're gonna have to throw the screen away and throw the keyboard and mouse away because you can't use them or perhaps you even want to get the external mouse and keyboard so this perhaps is a better option. I'm going to leave some very good options of keyboard and mice as well as screens that are affordable in the video description below. Secondly, it is smaller. Now this laptop is a 14 inch one and as you can see the footprint of this mini PC is a lot smaller. Now this is attached to the power which obviously the laptop you know you don't have to do that because it's got battery as well. If it's on battery it's actually slower much more slower than when it's plugged in. That's another interesting bit. But the actual footprint of this is smaller if you're looking for a desk replacement. Let's say you do want to make a kind of a desk station setup, then you do have to get a screen and you plug your laptop in. It's going to take a lot of space on the desk. But this guy here, you can attach in the back of the monitor and your desk is going to be completely clutter free or device free. Number three, the mini PC has a much better I.O. A laptop will usually have something like two USB-Cs on the side, one HDMI, mic and headphone combo jack, and maybe you get one USB Type-A on the other side. But let's have a look what this mini PC offers. Firstly, on the right side, we've got a full-size SD card reader that roughly goes around 100 and a little bit over 100 megabytes per second read and write speeds, which is nice for creators, even if you want to do ingest or something like that. On the left side, we have a Kensington lock, if you do want to lock it into some of your devices or you're one of those guys who think that someone might steal this. In the front of the device we've got two USB Type-A ports, both of them 10 gigabits in speed as well as a mic and headphone combo jack in there and a power button. On the back of the device ooh, we've got a ton of things going on. We've got two USB Type-C's which are actually USB and up to 40 gigabits per speed bandwidth as well as display output and we've got another two HDMI ports so you can attach four displays up to this PC and up to 8k resolution which is absolutely insane on top of that we've got another two USB type A ports one of them 10 gigabits and one of them USB 2.0 as well as a 2.5 gigabit LAN port all together this mini PC has so much more connectivity ports than a laptop. In fact, even the best laptops might not have as much ports as this one here. Number four is the display outputs. I already mentioned this in the inputs, but on the laptop, we only are supported one or two screens, one HDMI output, and you could get another display out through the USB-C. 
but in here we've got four. Number five is the actual CPU performance. And just to showcase that we've got everything working here, we've got our CPU, which in this case is i7-13700H, which is a 14 core CPU and 20 threads. Pretty insane in a small PC like that. Then we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is DDR4, which means the upgradability for this one to 64 gigabytes is very, very cheap. We've got one terabyte SSD inside. We've got Wi-Fi. This is Wi-Fi 6E as well as Bluetooth 5.3, by the way. And then we've got integrated XE graphics on the 13700H. You can see the results on the screen there. Now, I've actually done also the same on this laptop. This ASUS ZenBook 14X OLED actually has a 3900H CPU. And if we see the difference between these CPUs, you can see that this 3900H actually boosts to 5.4 GHz instead of 5 GHz on the 13700H. Even though they have the same core count, the 900H or i9 does go faster in terms of boost clock speeds. So single core 1721 and CPU multi-core 16052. At default, this is actually being clocked down a little bit. And what I mean by that is if I open XTU, then at the default, this was at 80 watts boost. And then the long-term peel to limit is 35 watts but i wanted to see how much more like thermal limit there is 35 watts is very very conservative now if i'm actually going to put the long term one to 75 watts we're going to apply that now if we just do a score test as you can see 16,000 points here at 80 watts at first it should thermal throttle a little bit now it only lets it go 76 watts not 80 watts now it's thermal throttling a little bit Come on, the fans are kicking in a little bit now. The fans are still not going full speed. Come on, fans. 15,000 points. Because the fans, for some reason, didn't clock in quite as fast. Let's see if we just go everything unlimited. Let's see what happens. We got 16,000 points, so that's what we're playing with. But I got that when nothing was happening in the background. So let's try that one now. It's already heated up, so probably a little bit lower. Come on, fans. What are we doing? 74 watts. Are we pulling a little bit more? the fans react to a little bit slow, uh, which is actually designed to before, make this perform at like quieter levels, which means that if you quickly go to 100 degrees for a little bit, it's not going to ramp the fans up so you're not going to hear view, 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 view all the time. As you can see, one of the P cores is 100 degrees there. For the laptop, as you can see, 9,000 points on the laptop, which is quite a bit slower. So I have set the fans to performance mode actually here in BIOS, which I'd recommend you to as well. There's quiet, normal and performance mode. They're not that loud and I'm getting the most performance out of this one. There is no power limits or anything else I can do in here. Just boot options, security, nothing else. This PC actually has a top that you can take off. There's two little kind of finger places in there. If you just take this top off, it does get a little bit better and more air in from there and should get better cooling performance. Let's see how this works then. Almost 16,000 points, which is actually roughly around Ryzen Threadripper first generation performance. To get that in a tiny mini PC like that, yeah, technology has evolved quite a bit, but Threadripper first gen is quite old as well. And if you're thinking, oh man, with thermal throttling, then laptops always thermal throttle. So you don't actually need to worry about that. It'll clock itself down as much as possible. The point here is how much performance and cooling can we get out there? As you can see, very close to 16,000 points. And remember the single core performance, we got 1700 points. And point number six, uh, extra point here is the upgradability aspect. If you look here on the bottom, we've got some screws. These are also the rubber feet for the PC and we can see inside the PC. Now careful because we've got this ribbon cable here and this ribbon cable actually brings us to one of the things here. So if you want to add another SSD in here, for example, I've got this team group uh, Vulcan SSD here. It is very, very simple. You don't even have to take this ribbon cable out. You can leave that plugged in there completely fine. All you have to do is it goes that way. Use these sides push it in, voila, and you've got an SSD installed. It doesn't have to be an SSD, it can also be a hard drive. So if you want some larger storage, perhaps you can go with 2.5 inch hard drive. An SSD 2.5 inch will be quiet, well, completely silent, and you can upgrade it to quite large storage as well, up to eight terabytes. We can also see a little thermal pad in here. 
which would have gone inside there and kept this guy cooled down. The SSD that's plugged in here is the Lexar NM7A1, one terabyte. We can see another M.2 expansion slot. Now, this is not a full size. In some of these PCs, you do get it full size, but this is not a full size. And both of these SSDs should be PCI Gen 4 X4 SSDs. And underneath the main OS SSD, we can see a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card, which you can change if you want to. And here we can see our DDR4. We have got Lexar as well. Interesting, Lexar has probably paired up with them to provide the SSDs as well as the RAM. This is 32 gigabytes. You can easily upgrade it to 64, like I mentioned before. So the upgradability aspect, as you can see here, can be better than the laptop because often laptops might have only one upgradable SSD or one RAM slot or sometimes even no uh, RAM to be able to upgrade. Now, let's see on the other side of this little mini PC to actually see the cooling. Now we've got to take these antennas off. And as you can see, this is our whole PC here. The SD card slot, reader on the side, everything that you need to upgrade is on top, very easily accessible. But the CPU that you don't really need to upgrade or do anything with is on the other side. But while we're here, let's take a look if we can make anything better. So here we can see the fan. It's a blower style fan that takes in the air from there and then blows it out from there, which is a little heat sink. Now to do this on a laptop would be a lot harder and a lot more taxing because um, you might actually break there something a little bit easier. We can take the fan header out from the side and then we can fold it forwards just like that. There is only one heat pipe that goes around and then it is attached on this heatsink on the bottom there. Underneath there we can see the CPU and we're actually gonna undo this to see what the thermal paste application is like on this CPU. As you can see here's all of the thermal solution. You can see there is a little thermal pad that also cools down the power delivery on these VRMs there through this tiny little bit in there and as you can see this thermal pad is actually put in a little bit wonky so it doesn't get proper coverage on the side there that it should be so we're going to fix that i'm going to put it just the other way so we should be getting a little bit better contact there you can see the thermal paste application is quite all right but it looks quite solid so we'll see if we can change that to something better all we have to do is take a little bit of toilet roll, put some pure alcohol on it. And firstly, let's clean the CPU here. Now, one of the first things what we can see on this chip here is that it is a chiplet design. We can see a chip on there, which most likely is the graphics. And then here we have the CPU. And then let's clean this here as well. So you have to be very careful because if that cracks, if you like drop something in there, it can crack very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of Arctic MX6 and I'm actually going to put firstly some on this side here. So what this is going to do is basically help me glue this thermal pad to there. So it would make nice contact and keep it nice and cool. And then we're going to take a nice slab of thermal paste. Then I'll take a tiny little spatula and spread it around, making sure all of the CPU dye is nicely covered. So what, it's a little bit caked in. And now we'll put the whole thing back together. How cool is that you can have so much performance in a palm of your hand just like that. Now putting these Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas back can be a little bit of a pain because it they're so small. There we go. And this plastic protective film will keep them from actually coming off. So I'm going to glue that back in there. RAM goes back, the ribbon cable back. Make sure you put it the right way. As you can see, it shows here this arrow will show front. Let's turn it back on and see what happens. Thermal throttle at first a little bit. Come on fans. The fans are very slow to kick in. We did 77.9 watts now. A little bit more, which is interesting. 15.459. Okay, the fans are kicking in now. I'm going to start the second one straight away to make sure that the fans keep giving on. I want to see if we can actually get a better result. As you can see, we're not thermal throttling now. Okay, now we are at 77, 78. As you can see, we're pushing a little bit more now. 
the fans keep being on i think we're going to get a better result this time just because the fans keep cooling it down as you can see we're 73 watts which means it's trying to push for higher clock speeds it's not lowering the wattage and can keep the higher clock speeds and we're 98 degrees we're not 101 as we were before the fans are going now i think this is going to be higher score now watch this boom 16,123. this pc is trying to be quiet and then when it gets louder when the fans kick in there is actually more performance there but it values the quietness a little bit more than the performance so but if you do need something like a long-term performance just once the fans kick in the pc can actually boost itself a little bit higher See, the first time it was trying to keep it down and keeping it, hoping that the load will end before it has to boost the fans up. But the load didn't end, which means the fans kept boosting up. And then we started the load again, which meant like, ooh, it thinks we're hot and then tries to cool it down, which actually gives it a little bit more performance. Now I'm doing a single core test here as well to see what's going on. We're pulling roughly around 18 watts in there, 69 degrees, not bad. And let's see which one of these cores will boost quite a few of them have gone to 4.9 4.9 then 4.8 on some of them so we're actually 5 gigahertz on p core 2 and 3. the interesting thing is i did the test on the laptop and as you can see laptop is completed now 9753 points which is actually quite a bit lower than what i got previously i got 16,000 something points as no actually i got 14,000 points with the cpu and uh, 1700 points with a single core but that just shows that sometimes the laptop is even more thermally strained because it might not have the power to just push on the cpu especially if you go in some of the lower end ones what we can see in here but there are some downsides the gpu power on this here is not the best if you go with a laptop very often they will throw in a low end rtx 3050 like what we have in here or something else which is better than the integrated graphics on intel's bit but that will make the laptop quite a bit more expensive and if you don't need necessarily an rtx gpu even if you're doing photo editing for example the integrated one in there is very very good and especially if you're doing video editing the reason for going with this option here is because we have intel quick sync the intel quick sync works here very very well if you're using some very very hard codecs like a 10 bit 422 h265 which on amd system or amd igpus will not be able to decode this guy here will browse this through very very smoothly on any of the timeline that you might be using so any mirrorless camera footage that you might have this guy will do it very very well if you are using complex timelines and you know adding lots of effects and things like that then obviously this is not the pc for you and perhaps then you want to build yourself your own which you can find some build guides in the description below if you do want to build that and you have budget from 750 to 5000 plus there is a video for you you can check them out but the downside is you can't actually upgrade a dedicated gpu into here there is no way of doing it you can do some you know frankensteining and get uh, an external gpu somehow connected to the m.2 spare slot in there but that is not really advised and i wouldn't do that but as a beginner or just to get going from everyday stuff or just some work related things perhaps you don't need that you want something just for your office just when you're working from home you're doing emails you're doing a lot of different things perhaps you want multi screen setup and do a lot of productivity loads at the same time this guy is absolutely amazing at that because it does have the cpu power and the gpu power to do that as well as photo and video editing the other downside is it doesn't have a screen or speaker which we mentioned there so if you do want to listen to something you might want to get extra speakers or perhaps your monitor has the speakers just something to consider about this one if you do want to pick up this Geekcom IT13, then I'll leave it in the description below. There is an i5, i7 and i9 models available. There is the same CPU what we have here, the 13900H on this Asus ZenBook Pro 14X. You can get that on this mini PC as well. So it's a little bit more powerful, boosts a little bit higher. So the single core, the PC will feel even more snappier than this one. This one is kind of the middle option and I highly recommend this one because that's probably the best of both worlds. One thing I do wish is that Geekcom would offer bare bones version which means we could add our own RAM and SSD which might make this even more affordable. But at this price point what you, get, what you can get it and I think there is some discount codes in the description below as well. This can be very very affordable and on that note it's time to end. All right then I'll see you soon.